Hey guys, we're going to go over some uh, more momentum practice for review. A large circular disc of mass M and radius R is initially stationary on a horizontal icy surface. A person of mass M over 2 stands on the edge of the disc. Without slipping on the disc, the person throws a large stone of mass M over 20. At initial speed, V naught from a height H above the ice in its radial direction is shown in figure above. The coefficient of friction between the disc and the ice is mu. All velocities are measured relative to the ground. The time it takes to throw the stone is negligible. Express all algebraic answers in terms of M, R, V naught, H, mu, and fundamental constants. Uh, derive an expression for the length of time it will take the stone to strike the ice. All right, so we only care about the y direction. In the y direction, our initial velocity is zero. Uh, our acceleration is g. Our displacement is h. So we would have that x minus x naught equals one half a t squared. And so t would be equal to two times h over g. And again, you'd want to have the equation by itself in case that's points. So you'd want to have it in terms of their variables. Uh, assuming the disk is free to slide on the ice, drive an expression for the speed of the disk and person immediately after the stone is thrown. So our initial condition is that momentum is conserved. So our initial momentum is zero. Our final momentum, I'm going to make the stone have positive momentum. And so its momentum is going to be M over 20 V naught. And then our momentum, the person and the stone, is going to be negative. So I have minus. I'm saying that the person is M over 2. And the disk is m. So I have 3m over 2 times v. So I'm going to get this to the other side. So I have 3 halves mv equals m over 20 v naught. I'm going to cancel out an m. And I'm going to multiply by 2 and divide by 3 so I can get V by itself. And I have 2 over 60, which would be 1 over 30 V naught. Uh, derive an expression for the time it will take the disk to stop sliding. All right, so I have f net equals ma. I have mu n equals ma. My acceleration is going to be mu g. The mass would be the 3 halves m, and n would be 3 halves mg, right? So that's going to cancel out. So if I make a chart, and I should make this. This friction is positive. My velocity is negative 130 V naught because it's to the left. My final velocity would be zero. My acceleration is positive because the friction is going to the right, but I'm going to the left. And then I'm solving for T. So I have V minus V naught over A would be equal to T. So I have 1 over 30 V naught over mu G. And then I'd have a negative of a negative, which would be a positive. A small block of mass M starts from rest at the top of frictionless ramp, which is at a height H above. Horizontal tabletop are shown in a side view above. The block slides down the smooth ramp and reaches a point P with a speed of V naught. After the block reaches P at the bottom of the ramp, it slides on a tabletop guided by a circular vertical wall of radius R as shown in the top view. The tabletop has negligible friction. The coefficient to connect friction between the block and the circular wall is mu. 
uh, derive an expression for the height of the ramp H in terms of V naught. All right, so we would do, I don't know how it's ended up with momentum stuff, because this is definitely conservation of energy. I have potential at the top, and I'm going to have kinetic at the bottom. They tell us that it's V naught, so I'm going to cancel out an M multiplied by, no, we divide by G, right? So I want an expression for H. A short time after passing point P, the block is in contact with the wall and it moves at the speed of V. Is the vertical component of the net force on the block upward, downward, or zero? So looking downward at it, the vertical component is zero. On the figure below, starting on the block indicates the direction of the horizontal component of that force moving on the block when it's at position shown. So there's going to be a normal force on it from the wall, and then it's sliding along the rough wall. It's going to be friction going that way. So uh, the wall provides a turning force. Friction opposes, opposes the motion. Express your answer to find in terms of V naught V M R mu and fundamental constants as appropriate. Drive an expression for the magnitude of the normal force exerted on a block with a circular wall as a function of V. So F net equals M V squared over R. So N equals M V squared over R. <clears throat> uh, D, derive an expression for the magnitude of tangent tangent to tangential acceleration of the block at the instant the block has attained a speed of V. All right, so uh, this is going to be F net equals MA, even though it's turning, they're talking about the tangential acceleration, that's not centripetal acceleration, so that's gonna be from the friction. Uh, friction is going to be equal to Mu n. We have two n's here. So I should make this one the n from the wall and this one n from the table. And this one would be equal to mg because there's no other vertical force, right? We're saying the vertical force is zero, so the normal equals the weight. And so our acceleration is equal to mu g. So V would be equal to V naught plus mu GT. And I should make it negative. So it's going to oppose. It's going to be slowing, right? So and again, I'm using their letters. Uh, Derive an expression VT is speed of block as a function of time after a point's Point P and that's this. A small dart of 0 0.02 kilograms is launched at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal initial speed of 10 meters per second. The moment it reaches its highest point in its path, it is moving horizontally. It collides with and sticks to a wooden block of 0.10 kilograms that's suspended at the end of a massless string. The center of mass of the block is 1.2 meters below the pivot point of strain, the block and the dart then swing up until the string makes an angle of theta with the vertical as shown above. Air resistance is negligible. Uh, determine the speed of the block just before it hits the, the, so when it's at this point, it only has its horizontal component of velocity. So it's gonna be, uh, Ten 
cosine 30, which is 8.66 or 8.7 meters per second. I'll calculate the horizontal distance between the launching point of the dart and the point on the floor directly below the block. Okay, so how far does it go? Well, I need to get a time. I can get a time from looking at the y direction. So in the y direction, it would be B sine. So we know that sine is one half. That's going to be five meters per second. And so in the y direction, it is not moving at that moment, but its acceleration is negative 10. So my time is 0.5 seconds, right? It takes 0.5 seconds to cancel out five meters per second on Earth. And so the distance is going to be equal to 8.7 times 0.5 seconds, or it's 4.35. Let's make it 4.4 meters. All right, I want the speed afterwards. So I'm going to have the darts momentum is going to be equal to the dart and the blocks mass together times the velocity. So this is going to be M1 V1 naught over M1 plus M2. So it's embedded. So I have 0 0.02 kilograms. 8.7 meters per second, and then I need to add these two together, so it's 0.1, and so it's going to be 0.12 kilograms. So I have... 1.45 meters per second. Uh, calculate the angle of theta through which the dart and block on the string will rise before coming more materially to rest. Uh, the block then continues to swing a simple pendulum. Calculate the time between when the dart collides with the block and when the block first returns to its original position. I'll do this part first. So this is going to give us the period, and it's going to be half of the period for it to get back to its original position, right? Because it's going to swing up and then swing down. So I have a period of about 2.2 seconds, and so that would happen at 1.1 second, right? So it's going to hit here. It's going to go up, go back down, but an entire cycle would be for it to go back there and go back to where it started, right? So we're only going to have half of a period. All right, I want to do the angle. I want to find out what the height is. All right, so I have uh, kinetic energy at the bottom. I said it was 1.2, right? 1.45. So I'm going to say that I have kinetic energy at the bottom, and I have potential energy at the top. I'm going to cancel out the masses. I'm going to get my H, and that's going to be... One half, 1.45 meters per second squared over 10. So I got a height of 0 0.105. So looking at my picture here. I have that my height is 0 0.105 meters. And I know that this minus this will be that side of the triangle, right? So I'm going to have 1.2 minus 0 0.105. I have 
1.095, let's say 1.1 meters, and then I can solve for theta. So theta would be the cosine inverse of the adjacent, which is 1.5 meters over 1.2 meters. I think I might be in radians. No, I'm in degrees in this calculator. That must be on the calculator. So cosine inverse of 1.1 divided by 1.2. And I got 23.5, so 24. In a second experiment, a dart with more mass is launched the same speed and angle the dart collides with and sticks to the same wooden block. Would the angle that the dart and the block swing to increase, decrease, or stay the same? All right, so it's going to get there with the same speed because that mass cancels out in that. It's going to swing to the same height. No, it's going to have less velocity because it has more mass. Let's, it's going to have more velocity because it has more mass, right? So we're going to... This would be bigger to start with, which means our final momentum would be bigger. So if I doubled the mass, it's going to go higher because it's a bigger velocity that gets squared. It should stay the same, but again, when we derived that, we made assumptions, right, that it was only moving sideways as opposed to going up. But in the first one, like, it didn't go up much. Like, 0 0.11 is not a big distance for it going up. A uh, 0.3-kilogram cart moving at 2 meters per second to the right collides with the 0.1 cart moving to the left. So that means this is negative. After the collision, uh, the 0.1 kilogram cart moves to the right with a speed of 1.2 meters per second. Uh, assume friction is negligible. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the 0.3 cart after the collision. All right, so momentum is conserved. looking for my final velocity of m1 so i'm going to have m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2 naught minus m2 v2 over m1 is equal to v1 and that it's best if you move everything around and then you substitute at the very end that will make physics teachers physics professors happy so i have 0.3 kilograms and two meters per second and I have 0.1 kilograms and negative three meters per second and then I have 0.1 kilograms and 1.2 meters per second and I have 0.3 kilograms So I have 0.6 meters per second. Is it elastic? Elastic for us only means it has the same amount of kinetic energy before as after. So 
So that's going to be the sum of our original kinetic energies and the sum of our final kinetic energies. And again, these are speeds, not velocities, so we don't have to worry about the sign. It's going to cancel out anyways. So I'm going to have 0.3 times 2 plus 0.1 times 3. And then I have 0.3 times 0.6. Plus 0.1 times 1.2 squared. And the most common place for you to find an elastic collision is in a physics problem. All right, so I start with 1.05 joules of energy, and I end up with 0.126 joules. So it is not lost. Point nine two four joules. So elastic means that it is conserved. Uh, the point three cart is now removed. The point one cart continues to move to the right and then collides with and compresses an ideal spring whose right end is attached to a fixed wall. Calculate the potential energy of the spring when it reaches the maximum compression. Uh, it would just be equal to the kinetic energy of the cart, right? Uh, the maximum compression of the spring is 0.1. Calculate the spring constant. So I have 0 0.072 joules is equal to 1 half kx squared. So I have 2 times 0 0.072 uh, divided by 0 0.1 meters squared equal to k. You can see like these Free responses. They just want to see that you can do a bunch of different stuff, right? That's the main thing. They're getting you to do, you know, a lot of different skills over a lot of different topics. Uh, suppose that instead of spring is nonlinear, such the force due in the spring when it's compressed, a distance x is f equals negative b x cubed. Calculate the value of b if the spring is. compressed 0.1 meters. All right, so I know that the work done to compress the spring from zero to 0.1 is gonna be FDX. So this is gonna be from zero to 0.1 is going to be So this is going to be – so i got to put a point 0.4 in there. I'm sorry. So I'm going to have point 0.1 times point 0.1 times point 0.1 times point 0.1 divided by 4. So I have negative b, 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, and this is going to be equal to my 0 0.072 joules. I can ignore this because that's not...
the work would be the opposite of this, right? The work that we did on the spring as opposed to the work the spring did. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. And then I just got to get B by itself. So I have 0 0.072 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. So B is 28, 2,880. And that would be, I want to end up with joules. And I need to cancel out meters cubed, right? that would have meters cubed here, and that would give us an answer that's in joules. 